business we are here to be blessed by god we are here to be lifted up by god and now if actually you know deep down in your heart you want god to touch you by his word that is going to cause a revival in your life that is going to cause a revival in your family church i want you just to do one thing for me i want you to do one thing for me and this thing is just to clap for jesus amen 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 now we the youth contenders we are here to speak about something about something we need to know about salvation we've always been hearing about salvation salvation of your soul but it's deeper than we think is deeper than we see because a natural mind cannot understand spiritual things amen church amen so it is time for us to go deeper in the world concerning salvation according to the book of titus chapter 2 verse 11 it is written that the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men that's right that grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men the gospel has moved around the world mm. even a little child knows john 3 16 that's they know right. John 2 16 for God so loved the world he sent his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life a little child knows that everybody knows that but it is not everybody that is a partaker of that grace hmm. it is not everybody that is a partaker of that gospel hmm. it is not everybody that is benefiting from this gospel mm -hmm. there is a reason why is it that some people reject the truth why is it that some people fight against the truth why the other people die for the truth mm. the other people are persecuted for the truth mm. there is a reason John, clap your for the you contenders amen now why do some people why are they partakers of that grace Now, according to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, he said, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, to them that love God, how do you love your God? The Lord Jesus Christ gave us a perfect example. He told us in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 37, he said, And he said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Letting us know that you must love God with everything that you have. Now, he said, And, and he that he called, and unto the called, who are the called? Who are these people that are called? They are referred to as the elect in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. And in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, they are in First Peter chapter 1, verse 2, they are referred to as the elect according to the election, according to the foreknowledge of God, through of God the Father. Now, what is the foreknowledge of God? It takes us to verse 29 of Romans chapter 8. He said, For whom he did foreknown, he did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his son oh, that yeah. christ may be the firstborn among many brethren now George, now church who are those that are called now these people that are called were called through what through the foreknowledge of god what is the foreknowledge of god this is the attribute of god that makes him know the end from the beginning remember he told jeremiah in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 he said i formed thee in the belly he said i knew thee and before that came it forth, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet. Now, how did you know that Jeremiah was in the womb? Through the foreknowledge. Now, that is why he said in the book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 3, he tells us, he said, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I hate before oh. they were born. Why? Through his foreknowledge, he knew that Esau would give up the birthright for mere porridge. Hey. But Jacob will do anything to get that birthright. Through his foreknowledge to the lord jesus through Thank his foreknowledge that is why he said in the book of second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 
He said, but we ought to give thanks always to God, brethren, beloved of the Lord, who, but God, before, because God has chosen you from the beginning that you should be, you should be called unto salvation according to the sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. And Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 tells us, he said, who has called us, who has saved us, who has called us with a holy calling, not with, the, with our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which was given us in Jesus before the world began. That is to tell you that these people that were called were chosen before the foundation of the world. Ephesians chapter, 4, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, it tells us, he said, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Amen. Sure. That is why Peter tells us in Second Peter chapter one verse nine. In Second Peter chapter two verse nine. Sorry, he tells us. He said, "Thou art." He said, "We ye are a chosen generation." He said, "A peculiar people." He said, "A holy nation, a royal priesthood." Amen, church. Now, so we hear some pastor tells us that what? They take this prayer point. They say, Father, cancel their name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. But that book has been, that book has been written before the foundation of the world. How do I know? He said the foundation of God standeth sure. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. The foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Let those that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Now, these people that were chosen, who are they? Now, these people that are predestinated. These people that are predestinated to make it, who are they? They are what? The children of promise. Amen, church. Now, according to the book of Galatians chapter 4, they are referred to as what? As the children of God. Now, these children of God were born we are an offspring of the sons of god now when you talk about the sons of god they are different quite different from the children of god there is a difference now the sons of god started from the book of what genesis chapter 1 from 26 to 27 down to genesis chapter 5 and 6 now we see this so god said let us make man in our image after our own likeness and god made man that way amen church he made man sons of god now these sons of god what make them sons is that they had authority they had power they were given dominion and they were meant to look after the earth amen that is what make them sons. There's even sons and children but now these sons of god had authority now i want to make you understand something that a lot of people have argued who are the sons of god some people say that there are angels that come down from heaven to sleep with the daughters of men no that is wrong although we know that the word sons of god was derived from a hebrew word which is nai elohim meaning the sons of god we know that for sure but they are not angels why we have to take it line upon line precept upon precept a little here and a little there now we have your half hour you can tell us That's Amen, right. now we have the modern translation of the bible now this modern translation have been under have been in existence since this 17th century since this 18th century but they had other translations that have been used during the days of the apostles they have their own translation of the bible in their own language we use kjv we see niv we see various translation now men bring out translation to suit their own doctrine for example we have niv there's one secret i want to reveal to you the man that wrote that bible is harper collins now that is why we should be careful with the scriptures we use we should be careful with the bible we read that man that wrote that scripture that same man also wrote the satanic bible that same man also wrote the joy of gay sex so now when actually you are looking at the scriptures we read let's be careful let's look at where can we read from which one is authentic that is what we should follow and now now let's compare we have to compare spiritual things with spiritual things now let's compare this modern translation especially kjv with the ancient translation since these people say they are angels that come down from heaven no let's look at from the ancient translation we have people the various translation like tagum neophyti simachos and samaritan tagum we have tagum jonathan ancient translations since 200 bc before christ now these translations now how did they refer to these sons of god now we have the dead sea scrolls 
they refer to the sons of God as what? As the children or sets, not as what angels coming down from heaven. Clap your hand at the revelation. That's why. Right. And now we see that most Jewish co- uh, uh, rabbis, most Jewish commentators, they use the word sons of nobles to explain these sons of sets, to explain their makeup, their body makeup, to explain that they are not just ordinary people. But they are nobles. Amen, church. But how are they nobles? As in, what, why do we mean by saying they are nobles? That's why we have to look at other ancient translations that makes us understand that they are sons of what? Of rulers. Why are they sons of rulers? Because God has given us dominion over the earth. Amen, church. Amen, church. Now, we also see other translations that refer to them as the sons of judges. Amen, church. They refer to them as the sons of judges. Why? Because the sons of God judge the sons of men. That is why Paul had that revelation. He was telling the church that the church, whenever we have an issue, we should not go to unbelievers. We should not move to the sons of men. But we should settle it here in the church. Why? Because we are going to judge them at the end of the day. And we are even going to judge angels. Amen, church. That is why, and this all these commentaries make us understand that what they are from the lineage of Adam, from the lineage of Seth, not from an angel coming down. All those other translations only explain the nature of these people, their position. That is the only thing it explains. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And now we've seen the sons of Seth are, are the sons of God. They are filled with power. They are filled with authority. When you see them, they are representatives of God here on earth. But when they mix with the daughters of men in the book of Genesis chapter 6, they produce a high breed. These people are what? Children. Why? Because they have lost their sonship. They are no longer a perfect people. They are no longer sons. Now, there is that word the Bible says, when the sons of God took for them wives from the daughters of men, they said they produce giants. That word giant was derived from the word, from the Hebrew word Nephilim. It was derived from the word nafa, the root word nafa. It means to ruin, to kill. In other words, those giants were what ruined sons of God. Mm. They've lost their sonship. Mm. Amen, church. Now, since they lost their sonship, they now became children. They are now worldly. They can now be tempted anyhow by Satan. They are now to throw and fro. And that is why God has given us a promise. And now the, the children of God, we are looking forward to once more become sons of God. And that was why the Lord Jesus Christ was sent that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen, church. Now when he came, he made us sons. He made us sons. We are now adopted as what? As fellow heirs of what? Of, of God. Of the son of God. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now this is the transition of what? Of the sons of God. Amen, church. So that is the son of God. The sons of God are not angels coming down, giving birth to children. No. But the sons of God are the children of God, the lineage of Adam. Then when they fell, they became children, no longer sons. And when the Lord Jesus Christ came back, he brought us back. He took us unto restoration. And now you can proudly say, I am a son of God. That is why it is written that was, signs shall follow them that believe. Amen, church. That is why it is written that, that we are seated in Christ above all principalities, above all powers. That is why you can say unto the mountain, be thou removed and it shall be done. Why? Because we are now restored as sons and daughters of God. Now, which other reason shall we say that these angels are not sons of God? Now, let's look into the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 5. Unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son? This day have I begotten thee, and said he again, I will be to thee a father, and you to me a son. None of them, that is to tell you, that is to tell you that that is error. Now for you to be a son of God, a restored son of God, a reconciled son of God, you have to walk through the three stages of grace. They are called the three walks of grace. Hmm. Clap your heart when you contenders. This time, are you contender? The bride assembly, you contender. Contending Please for the effect. Praise the Lord. Now, the effect work of grace is justification. And justification came from the word justify. And justify means standing right. But in the Bible, justification means standing right before God. Amen. 
Now, John 3, 16, let us know. He said, For God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, it came with a price, and that price is believing. Now, Romans 10, 10, let us know. He said, With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen, church. Amen. And in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, he said, Behold, his soul which is lifted, which is not lifted, which is lifted, which is lifted is not upright in him, but the just shall, shall live by faith. faith. And in Romans 1 17, he said, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed as it is written from the faith just, to faith, that the just, just shall live by, by faith. faith. And in Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, he said, But we are not justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evidence that the just, just shall live by, by faith. faith. Mm-hmm. Brethren, it doesn't end there, it also moves further to the water baptism. Now, brethren, what is water baptism? Now, water baptism is is symbolic. Now, it symbolizes the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, brethren, in Christianity today, you say, how can one be baptized? Now, Christianity will tell in church today, they will tell you that you should be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Now, brethren, look at these three names. What is the name of the Father? John chapter 5 verse 43, let us know. He said, I come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another will come in his name, him will ye receive. Now, brethren, that tells us that the name of the Father is Jesus. Now, looking at the name of the Son, according to the book of Matthew chapter 1 from verse 21. He said, and, he shall bring, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, brethren, looking at the Holy Ghost. Now, but the Holy Ghost is the ghost of a holy man. For the Bible says that what? He gave up the ghost. And now, who is the Holy Ghost? John 14, 26, let us know. He said, For the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Glad to you contenders. That's right. Which tells us that the name of the Holy Ghost is the Lord Jesus. Now, for example, my brother here is David. Now, at home, he's known as David. Now, in his shop, he's known as Baba 70. Now, in the church, he's known as One Geek. Now, brethren, does that make him three different Davids? No. He still make him the same David one at all. Now, it is a controversy in Christianity. But now, Apostle Paul said something in the book of what? In the book of Acts chapter 2 from verse 38. He said, and repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Clap your hand, the the That's how you contend us. Carry on. Amen. And he said you should be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My emphasis is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So which means if you have not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, go and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank now, you very brethren, much. the work of grace did not just end in justification. It moved further to sanctification. And what is sanctification? Sanctification is a continual process. Now, James called the word, the word of God, a mirror. And brethren, if you wake up in the morning, a mirror shows you your reflection. That is why in the book of Psalm 119 verse 11, he said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart heart that I might not sin against thee. And Psalm 119 verse 130 he said, the entrance of thy word giveth light and it giveth understanding unto the simple. And Psalm 119 verse 105 said, thy word is a light unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 let us so that he might sanctify and cleanse him with the washing of water by the word. And in the book of John chapter 15 from verse 3 said, now you are clean through the word I have spoken unto you. And John 17 17 let us know, sanctify them through thy truth for thy word is truth. Now, brethren, all these things are sanctification. The word of God will cut you and sanctify you day by day. It will correct you day by day. That is why Hebrew chapter 4 from verse 12 says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of the asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Now, brethren, to remind you that the word of God is going to cut away, correct you everywhere in your day-to-day activities. Now, brethren, the work of grace did not just stop in sanctification. It took a step for that. And that step is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And what is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Now, in the book of, chapter, in the book of Rome, 
in the book of Acts, chapter one, from verse eight. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be a witness unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and unto Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, brethren, my emphasis is, you shall be a witness. Now, how will you witness Christ? It is by the life that you live. Because will Abraham said something. He said, "Don't preach me a sermon." He said, "Leave me a sermon." And the Bible said, "By their fruits you shall know them." Galatians right. five verse twenty two lets us know. Say, and the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, brethren, when all these things are in you, you are Christ-like. Now, when you are Christ-like, you are a Christian. And when you are a Christian, John chapter one verse twelve said something. He said, "As many that received them, to them he gave power to become the sons of God." And First Corinthians chapter two verse four, he said, "My speech and my word are not with the enticing word of man wisdom." But with the demonstration of the spirit and of power. And Ephesians 4, verse 30 lets us know. He said, Grieve not the Holy Ghost, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Now, brethren, when you are sealed unto the day of redemption, now this will take us to glorification. Now, many people will tell you glorification is when you receive the Holy Ghost. No, glorification is when you are bo- your mortal body is being transformed to, to immortality. Now, when your mortal body is being transformed to immortality, you have just been glorified. Now, brethren, when you have just been glorified, all these things are the three works of grace. Now, brethren, to also remind you that sanctification is a continual process till the rapture will come. Now, brethren, while all these things are complete, these are the three works of grace. Then clap your hand, church. Clap your hand to the Lord Jesus for the grace of our youth contenders. Carry on. Amen, church. Praise the Lord, church. Now, when we look at what they've discussed about, we've seen that who are these people that are predestinated? They are the children of God to be what to be transformed to the sons of God. Now, that is that uh, you know, we've talked about that. And for you to be transformed, now you have to be you are predestinated. Now, predestination involves you know, it involves a process, and that is what they've talked about: the three works of grace before you are now finally transformed back to sonship it involves three works of grace first of all you must be justified secondly you must be sanctified and finally you must receive the baptism of the holy ghost now aside from this these are the people that are predestinated unto eternal life the seeds of god but now what of those that are predestinated unto eternal condemnation because jude talked about it in the book of that Jude in verse 4 he said certain men have crept in on our before of old and we are ordained unto what condemnation you know that what before of old they were already ordained to condemnation now why were these people ordained to condemnation in verse 10 they were referred to as brute beast now the lord jesus christ make us understand the kind of people they are he called them o ye serpents amen church Amen, church. Amen. It is the serpent that is predestinated what to what to go to eternal condemnation. Now, first of all, many of us don't understand who the serpent is. Now, let's come back to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter three. Amen. When we are going to see, we are going to see that the serpent in verse one, you see that, and there was, and the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field. Now, the issue now is who is the serpent. Now, from the characteristic of the serpent, from the nature, you know that what actually the identity of the serpent. Amen, church. Now, it's only that the serpent was more subtle. What does it mean to be subtle? It means to be cunning. Now, when you say somebody is cunning, it means it involves a high level of reasoning. Mm. Amen, George. It That's involves right. a high level of reasoning. That's right. Sharp reasoning. He's a fast thinker, making us understand that the serpent is a thinking being. That is the only thing that separates man from animals. That mm. makes us understand that the serpent is a man. Why? Because he's a thinking being. Animals cannot think. Mm. They don't reason. They act by instinct. But with the man, human beings are thinkers. They reason. They gather knowledge. That was what the serpent was able to do. He was able to think that he could deceive the woman. Now, a woman is not dull. A woman is brilliant. But he was able to deceive the woman, making us understand his level of reasoning. This is a man. Not just an, he's not just an animal. Amen, George. He's not just an animal. Because of that high level of reasoning, he is a man. 
Amen, George. But the Bible called it a beast. Why is it a beast? Now, I want to make you understand something. A beast does not know anything about spiritual things. A beast is earthy. It is only natural. Amen, George. Amen. A beast is worldly. It follows the, 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 the it follows a normal routine, a normal way of life. Amen, George. Amen. It is earthy. Amen, George. It Amen. is not heavenly. A beast does not know anything about the rapture. A beast is not concerned about the revelation of the seven seals. A beast is not concerned about the mystery of God. It is only what the sons of God that are concerned about the mystery of God. That is why the serpent is referred to as a beast. It is not, it is not a spiritual man. Amen, church. It is earthy. Now, I want to make you understand something. It came from beneath. But when you are talking about the son of God, that is Adam, he came from above. Why? Because it is written that Adam was made in the image and likeness of God. That is why we say the serpent is a beast. He was not made in the image and likeness of God. He's a beast. He is not a spiritual person. He's a beast. He is not somebody that looks at the revelation mystery of God. That is why we say he's a beast. He is empty. He is worldly. But the sons of God are heavenly. So from this phrase, we understand now that the serpent is an earthbound man. Earthborn man. Amen, church. Amen. Earthborn. Amen. Now, the serpent seed are, have, I know they have come in into the race of mankind through Eve. Why? Because Eve was first called a woman before she became Eve. Eve meaning the mother of all living. She is the mother of the sons of God here on earth and she is the mother of the serpent seed here on earth. Hey. Amen, church. Now, when we are looking at these seeds now, these two seeds, the seed of the serpent. Now, the reason why the serpent is predestinated to hellfire is because their father, the serpent, one is meant to die he is earthy heaven and earth will pass away so the serpent was earthy amen church so amen. they were meant to pass away they cannot be eternal why because it is only the seed of god it is only the children of god that had the life of god in them will have eternal life church god bless you Clap to under the you contender. Oh, this clapping up is not enough now. Nah, please. If you are a defy, clap your hand to you contenders. Amen.